records. And if you study, we've checked out the ancient Chinese and the, the books, uh, not the book of records, but one of the most famous people that uh, they showed in their series was about the, the record keeper, the archives, right? And everything that we wrote down in, in our, <laughs> you could tell we had never seen those. They didn't even make those series in. We never even knew about it, right? We never knew nothing about it that they talk about archives, right? They talk about the records. They talk about the historicizing. Right? And that's what they talk about. And China have four or five thousand years of that history. Right? So we did the same things. They had one of the, their greatest people was the keeper of records and archives. And he was punished and his family was killed. All of that just for the records. <laughs> and, and it's true. And that's why we so down with records. We keep quadruples of everything. There it is right there. Here it is right here. The book of records, you know, like you have a book. So it all goes and it's repetitive. The stuff is so repetitive that if you have one set of books, it'll cover several years because 95% in there. It's been repeated over and over again. But there's an evolutionary process going on. Why are we doing this? Why did we do this? We did this because we had to study our movement. We had to study, uh, number one, the people are dropping off. The people are dying out. This is what we were seeing. The people are being locked up in prison. The government was confiscating records and keeping them for themselves. So the government got all this stuff. Like all my records, they got tons of it. That's why when we sue them, we're going to sue them for our records back. And we'll be surprised. It'll be photographs in there when we was in Colombia or when we was in Africa. Or it'll be tapes of meetings that we held 100 years ago. You done almost forgot it. You see what I mean? That's what the government have. I know they got it. I know they got it. But the only thing that they have a smell of is we know what they got. And we have a reasonable idea about what they think. Yeah, that's right. Uh, technically, okay, this will sound like bragging a little bit. We might as well do it. But at the end, we're going to close with uh, the fear of Allah, you know, and all of that. But we want to talk about the Negro part. The Negro part is the part that we, now, we open with Allah's Lord, Muhammad is Nabiin, the messenger of Allah. And what we're practicing is Al-Islam Adina. We're going to close with uh, with some ayats that we have been relating all around outside, inside, and we're going to close with those. That'll be the beginning and that'll be the end of each lecture during this series. Because in the middle of the lectures, we're going to say things that would sound like bragging. Okay, I just have to say it like it, you have to work yourself up to tell it like it is. But see, we've survived. There's been absolutely no African-American group or white group or anyone else that have lasted as long as we have with this much confrontation and come in with the attitude we have. There's people that lasted five or ten years, but they're nervous and they're, they, they, they put... Uh, What's the name in the crazy house in 61 or 62? Paul Robeson. Yeah, he was one of our best. But after so many years, it had an effect on him. Okay, we studied him. We studied us. We studied what we're doing. And boss man ain't had nothing but a good effect on us. 
and excuse the expression, but we have slapped the spit out of boss man. Yes, we have. And we want people to get used to that. We want them to hear it from us, and we're going to try to let you know that's what we've done because we're going to need your help. All y'all, as we get these things around here, in California, all around the U.S., we talk about sleeping under a bridge, and boss man will bring you there. He'll bring you to the bridge, and he'll say, now, nigga, and that's what we say. That's right, boss man. We thank you very much for your robbing and stealing and no count behind. We thank you for being a jackass. Because you don't know, I have to, how does it feel? It feels, I mean, after doing this so long, it feels unbelievable. It feels better than anything I've ever experienced. It's better than the first go-round. The first go-round in the late 60s and the 70s was not fun. Wasn't fun at all. Learning experience. If the helicopter was 25 feet above our house, and my kids can tell you about it, the house would shake. That made me mad. If it was a police car parked in front of my house, a plain closed police car, or if it was somebody up on the telephone poles, what they call PG&E, you know that people on the telephone pole, or with a PG truck, you know, a Pepco truck, like, would be the police. It, whether it's dealing drugs or whatever it was, it was surveillance. So what about after years of doing that out in the open? So you'd see them. And then at first, when you're a young guy, that stuff bothers you. That stuff, it would run most people crazy. So it had us a little worked up. So we said, well, let's look at history. What happened to all the Negroes? And by that time, they was knocking us over like flies. We said, well, I learned a little secret that, uh, that nobody else paid any attention to. I was raised in like what they call reform schools. You go in at 12, you come out at 14, you go back at 14 and a half, you go back and come out at 16, you go back at 17, and you come out at 20 and stuff like that. Then you get a break. You get a whole long run, eight years, without going back to the penitentiary. Now, that's rare because most people, once they get you in that trend, you go, on, on, da, 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 and they think we got this nigga on the trend, but it didn't happen like that. We got on the global treadmill, and that's been a wonderful experience. That's all I can say about it. And now is better than ever before. So when you look at us, you're looking at an evolving reality. And what used to bother us, if you think that this is the first time when a whole movement is just sitting there and ain't nothing happened, this is not the first time. It might be the, must be the third. Because that's what they did to East Oakland Enterprises. When I left the country, all of those businesses, all of that, and the government and went to everybody and scared them to death. And you're there with all of that business, all of that property by yourself. Yeah, by yourself. Just what everybody was praying for. Martin Luther King was working toward. That's what he was working for. Black Economic Enterprise Zone. Anybody ever heard of those Enterprise Zones? That's what they wanted to do. That's what we did in Oakland. After it was up and rolling, though, boss man, he, had, he put everybody, he put all, if you think tattletales and snitches is new, oh, no, we've been living with them, working with them ever since I can remember. So long that we like them now. They're like family. No, we don't dislike everybody, man, them snitches, them niggas telling them. No, welcome. Come on in. You know. Although I will say during this period, we have worked on affecting our, our tattletales so that uh, they would give us 10% of their, that's enough, that would be enough, of their focus and give boss man 90. Just give us 10. That would be fine. Uh, 
They don't have to sign a letter and say, I'm giving 10% and 90%. Just their behavior. They don't have to say nothing. They don't have to give no signals, nothing. They just, uh, why, we say that uh, if our snitches don't do that, they would be classified as insane. How? Anybody that's seen what, listen to our lectures and turn on the news <laughs> and watch what's going on and how many times we've been accurate. And the more they cut us off, the more accurate we're getting. We used to be way off. We used to be years off and what's going to happen. That'd be it. Then you used to look up five years it happened. Now it's been cut down to we say something, you can look for it to happen within a few doggone days. That's good, but that's dangerous. That means we didn't improve in our ability to outline and our ability to forecast, but that also could mean very well that the time for boss man during this historical cycle is getting close. Now, what we want everybody to understand is during this historical cycle, we're taking charge, we have taken charge of our own life. When you read the Quran or the Bible or you read ancient history, those were cycles of those people. Now we're living in our cycle. Nobody is forecasting. Nobody is taking action. Nobody is as accurate as we are. I just don't see them. I'm just saying, this is not bragging, but this is the way I feel like it is. You could have, you have a right to your own opinion and the people listening and seeing, they have a right to their own opinion. And we say that with conviction because we've been setting boss man up. The longer we've been doing this from 35, 37, six years back, the more accurate we're getting. The more accurate we're getting. Okay. Now, this is fundraising too, so we, we want to say before we go too much further, for the upcoming Eid, we're going to pass these DVDs out, and what we want y'all to do is form Masjid al-Islam support clubs, uh, whatever you call them. And we want y'all, instead of dropping it in at PGNA, which they're not doing nothing. Them people out there is deadbeats. Instead of dropping your money in Adams, Adams got 10. The man out there is so crazy. We got it on video. We was reciting a Quranic ayat. He called the police on us. Remember that? He called the police and he telling the police he has said, and I asked the question, am I saying something uh, not offensive, but vulgar or something. Obscene, yeah. You know what he called obscene? Subhanallah, the asra bi abdihi laylan min al masjidi al haram, and on and on and on. He said, that's obscene, didn't he? Tell the truth. He said, it's obscene. We said, alhamdulillah, great. And the people could hear it. And we repeated to make sure they heard it. So everything we're saying, we can verify. He said, yeah, man, that's a, uh, well, you didn't say, yeah, man. He said, that's obscene because the police is there. Now, nobody with any sense would call the white sheriff on the pol on blacks and they didn't just, that's only a few months after the brothers, the, you know, the killing spree. Oh, let me say this. If you think the killing spree is stopped because you don't see it on the news, that's what you don't see on the news. But they shoot Negroes. There has never been a time when they have been shooting down Negroes. I'm going to go back for a minute. You study why police departments was formed in the United States. Study any history book. For slave patrols, right? That's what they say in their own law enforcement. Anyway, so 
we want y'all to relate to, uh, excuse me a second, and uh, then we'll get on with what we're talking about. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. If you disclose acts of charity, even so, it is well. But if you conceal them and make them reach those who really in need. That means that's us. Okay. Not only are we really in need, but we are declaring our psycho spiritual jihad against the Zionist and the United States. Yes, we are declaring, of course we've already done it, but we are redeclaring psycho spiritual jihad on the United States of America and on the Zionist. And we expect